Miss Toy. Yes. Thank you for coming in here. Absolutely. Um, let's start off from the very beginning. Tell me a little bit about your business. Okay. Spark Educational Institution started as Spark Tutoring. Okay. So, of course, Spark goes into my middle name, okay. Sparkle. For the record, like, <laughs> you're the only Sparkle I know. Like, that's really your name, Sparkle. Like, I know other people that, that make it their name. Mm. By far, you got the most unique name that I've ever met in my, like, toy Sparkle pair. But, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Sparkle actually did come from the movie, Sparkle. Mm -hmm. It's, like, one of my mom's favorite movies. Mm -hmm. And she really wanted my name in lights. So here we are. Safe to say you made it. I made it. <laughs> you made it. Okay. the lights. Okay. <laughs> Always. <laughs> but yeah, Spark Educational Institution developed from Spark Tutoring. Mm -hmm. And we came up with the hashtag, actually, me and my, one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. We were just like in group chat. Shout talking. out to your best friend. Absolutely. Fraction. Brandon Fraction. Oh, there we go. What up? Yeah, okay, yeah, know, yeah. Okay. Stigmas all around. Oh, yeah, you can't you can't hide away from us right now. <laughs> I know. But it was like the day one chat, so it was mm -hmm. like fraction. We got Hamp in there, okay. my best friend Alicia, okay. Frank, you know, Shout out to the group chat. <laughs> you know, right? Shout out to Tasha, the group chat. you know. I'm pretty like all of them have a business. Toshmo. Toshmo. She's coming in in about two weeks. Oh, word. So, yeah, 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 we I must have yeah. inspired her. Yeah. <laughs> We've been talking about this. Mm -hmm. And then I got, you know, my boy Frank with mm -hmm. the photography solo, mm -hmm. uh, Southern Hospitality. That's photography. What said. Okay. You know, Hamp got the candle. You know, yeah, Hamp's going know crazy too. I need to get Hamp in here. So we were just talking, mm -hmm. you know, best friends hitting it. I'm like, okay, y'all, I really want to like take this tutoring thing to the next level. Mm -hmm. I need a hashtag, you know. Mm -hmm. I can't be out here on Instagram without a hashtag. You gotta have a hashtag. So we started different little things, and then Fraction was like, "Don't let your mind perish," and I'm like, "Yo, that's it." Flame emojis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I was excited because I'm uh -huh. like, okay, it's using my last name. It still has a part of me in it. It still mm -hmm. has the educational portion of it. So, like, I've been sticking with it in every post. I put my hashtag. So, it's growing. So, let's take it a step back then. So, you, you tutor. You're a teacher. Um, what do you teach? Her? I mean, what do you teach? What tutor? Um, and what age group? Okay. So, I'm an elementary teacher. Okay. So, I have a certification which is pre-K through three, which is early childhood. Mm -hmm. There's also a certification we can go to sixth grade. Mm -hmm. But in Norfolk State, I stuck with pre-K three. Mm -hmm. So, um, I could teach up to third grade, but with my master's degree, mm -hmm. I was able to venture into some other positions like um, teacher training mm -hmm. and interventionist. And I wanted to make some money on the side. It actually developed when I moved to Richmond for a year. Mm -hmm. My dad got sick and I decided to come home and I got this expensive apartment in Richmond because it's like everything's expensive. In Richmond. Everything. You're either in the hood <laughs> yeah. or you're living it's, large. It's left or right. There There's no, no, middle, <laughs> no, no middle ground at all. So I'm like, okay, this apartment is going to have me like pushing it. So mm -hmm. what's going to be some side hustle? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, everyone's like, won't you just tutor? I'm like, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Got a client. He was consistent. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I could really do this. So when I came back, that's when I developed Spark Tutoring. I got back into the Hampton Roads area. I started getting more clients, mm -hmm. word of mouth. And I mean, I'm here now. Just finished a whole six-week program. So let's dial it back. The fact that you're tutoring pre-K to third grade. Mm -hmm. My son's four right now. Right. Let's just give you a round of applause because you have patience. Yes. Because... <laughs> You got patience right there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, so that's impressive right there. Um, to kind of, I always talk in circles, so bear with me. Um, so how has that affected you with the pandemic? Has it been a help or a hurt with you with the pandemic? Mm, I don't think it created any change for me. Mm -hmm. um, I've always put myself in a mindset of thinking, what about the kids? Like, you think about how stressed we get sometimes, mm -hmm. how frustrated we get. Those moments we want to just literally throw the laptop, walk out the room, mm -hmm. throw the phone, whatever that's, you feel. Yeah, like, let's not act like we don't have those moments. I know for sure I do. So, think yeah. about a kid that can't fully express themselves, mm -hmm. that is just needing help, and they can be molded. Mm -hmm. I've put myself in that mindset to say, I have to be that person to allow them to express it, teach them how to express it, and also develop them. So, I think it's extra, extra dope that you have something that's recession proof. Yeah. So shout out to everyone that has their side hustle, and I think that's very imperative. Um, so you're already a, a ahead of the curve right now by having something on the side. 
But the thing that you have with your side hustle, that's the recession proof. <laughs> so that makes you stand out right there. Right. That's that's really, really dope right there if you're a business. Um, so with your first client, like how did that even come about? How did you go about grabbing your client? Okay. Shout out to my dad. Okay. Because it was a co-worker's mm-hmm. son. And she was just saying how she was having some trouble with him. Mm-hmm. Um, he did have an IEP and, you know, she was a single mom. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. She lived in Richmond, so it was maybe about a 10-minute drive from my apartment, Mm -hmm. but maybe 20 minutes from my job. So Mm -hmm. I would just drive straight to him after work. Mm -hmm. I would tutor him for an hour for two days a week, Mm -hmm. and we started seeing improvement. Mm -hmm. So I understood as a classroom teacher, regardless of what grade you teach, you can say you teach third grade, but you got like kindergartners in your room, you got first graders, you got a fifth grader in there, you got a fourth grader in there. Mm Developmental-wise, they're all over the place. For sure, for sure. I see that right now, even with like our son, just seeing the the classroom setting, like they they are all in their own special places. Mm -hmm. Um, So with that, so I imagine just over time, you were able to kind of put them under your wing and have them grow from there. Right. Um, What do you think the most challenging part was with the first client? Um, I think the challenge was finding his niche Mm -hmm. because I'm so used to finding a, maybe a group Mm -hmm. because I don't have that setting to do one-on-one in Mm -hmm. the classroom. So finding an actual individual niche takes a little bit more work and a lot of relationships. Whether he likes cars Mm -hmm. or like my son likes Avengers or whether it may be a certain thing with like dinosaurs anything like that once right. you found that type of thing you kind of build like an interest around there yes um what do you think is the most successful thing that happened with his particular learning experience rather i feel like the success was the fact that he saw that he could be successful mm-hmm. when he saw his own growth when mm-hmm. he realized that he was making progress that light bulb went off and it was just like he opened up to me a thousand percent so they need to see that someone is consistent, that they care, and that they know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. So you For can't sure. go in there nervous. You can't be like, um, oh, flipping through papers. You gotta I'm be assertive. Yeah. Through. You gotta go in there straightforward. Mm-hmm. This is what we're gonna do. A, B, C. This is the time <laughs> limit. You get your going. break here. We're not doing all the extraness. And yeah. I got you at the end. And they're like, okay. And I think that's really imperative when it comes, to, especially down to that age group as well. Um, the, the learning time and like the attention span like mm-hmm. you got an hour because yeah. 45 minutes to an hour because after that hour like mm-hmm is it it's a done deal yeah they they, they kind of jump around so um how do you how do you work with that attention span for this age group brain breaks Brain breaks. I like that. Brain breaks is a small activity that you can do. You can set your own time limit. Mm -hmm. Um, For smaller children, I would give them five to ten minutes. For an older kid, I would just leave it straight at five Mm -hmm. because they can kind of handle having a moment and coming back and developing that uh, strength to kind of sit down and have that endurance to say, okay, it's over. Mm-hmm. Versus think about your son. You give him yeah. a break, it's going to take him a minute to kind of come gotta, back. He's got to get back to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, so you got to you got to kind of account for that. Uh-huh. So that's why I said maybe five, two, ten minutes. Because okay. after that five, you need another five to be like, okay, when I come over here, yeah. we're going to breathe. You have your five minutes oh. and then we bring it back in another five minutes. Mm-hmm. So I completely understand with that. Then. You got to time everything. Okay. Literally everything. Oh, they're going to have to stop and tie their shoes. They're they're gonna need a snack. Yeah, They're gonna snack time is look over here. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it happens. It happens. I can definitely believe that. Now, with what you do now, um, considering that a lot of things are, are remote, how is how do you adapt to doing things are remote with the laptop with the children? How's that work for you? Funny thing is, I had already started providing online tutoring prior to the pandemic. Nice. So I already had a platform. Right. So it was just like, oh, I'm just going 100% mm-hmm. to remote instead of offering that because that client from Richmond, mm-hmm. he was my first online client as well when uh-huh. I moved back to the area. Goodness. So... I just expanded from there. I kind of worked out the kinks with him. Mm -hmm. So it was very easy to just say, all right, here are your slots. Here's the link. Mm -hmm. Here's what you need. What do you think the advantages of your program for, for young, for young mothers and fathers? What do you think the advantages for entering into this program? I think you will get the time 
that you need away from your child because mm-hmm. every parent needs it. Mm-hmm. We don't have to feel ashamed to say yeah. we need time away from our children. And if you're working from home, mm-hmm. you need a good moment to be able to get something done, knock it out Absolutely. before you check back in with your kid. Mm-hmm. So I can pretty much guarantee you an hour to an hour and a half with this. It's just silence. Yeah. It's peace. <laughs> I got it. No worries. Don't worry about <laughs> it. And it if I here. need you, I'll text you. Goodness. Okay. Moms and dads. That's real. <laughs> so overall, what's the goal to, to accomplish with this? Then? The biggest goal that I want to achieve is to actually start my own virtual homeschool. So um, I've already reached some kids in New York this summer. Mm-hmm. So I was like, ooh, I'm excited. We're starting to The expand. butterflies going. Uh, right? I think for all of us, all entrepreneurs, and we're going to a different section of our business, like you get overwhelmed. You're like, can I do this? Like, I know I'm already doing it right here, but the fact that it's just in New York, why Why do we do that for some reason? Like, we're doing the same exact thing. Self-sabotage. Why are we doing that? Like, we just need to have a lot more confidence in ourselves. And once we reach it, it's like, all right, we're here. Push the next limit. I agree. I feel, and I'm sure we all heard it in different words, but pretty much, like, if it doesn't make you nervous, like, that might not be it. Mm-hmm. That thing that makes you nervous, that thing that has you on the edge of your chair. That power. That, yeah, that's that's the thing that you want to do. That's what you want to lock into, because nothing worth it comes easy. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not going to be easy at first. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Sleepless nights, empty pockets. <laughs> so much stress. I mean... Man. The sacrifice is so real, but that's what makes entrepreneurs mm-hmm. so powerful because we stuck through it. The reward and we didn't is so worth it. Oh my goodness, yes. It's worth it. Just to go back to see, that's my baby. That's what mm-hmm. I did with this. This was the vision I had in this time. And here's where it is from there. Even if it's just something that, even once you got your LLC, like mm-hmm. that's, you bust up right, right there. Like, oh, like I got my LLC. Official. Like I can write that all my taxes. <laughs> Come on, talk that. That's a whole different channel right there. Right. They'll, they'll get to that. But I think just the fact that when you take your business seriously, um, number one, people start taking you seriously. Um, and the fact that you, you set yourself in such a light that other parents and other business owners can see what you're doing, I think that's phenomenal right there for you. Um, what do you? What's next for you in the business? What's next is expanding my website, mm-hmm. being able to offer more services. Mm-hmm. So getting into that homeschool realm, mm-hmm. helping those parents out because that's actually starting to blow up. Yeah. With the pandemic, that's getting bigger every day.